Greetings, brethren. I bring greetings to you in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you for being a part of this ministry, for watching our videos and for sharing them and for tuning in to continue to be a part of this ministry, The Narrow West Christ for All Nations. And for those of you who have been supporting us and sharing our videos, it's my prayer that God Almighty will help you. Whichever way you're supporting us, may you never lack in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord, this is another day you've made. We rejoice today and we are glad in you that you have done marvelous and great things for us. Receive all glory and praise in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. O Lord our King, we ask that you come and reign. Open our hearts to receive from you, open the heavens and speak to us. Give us the heart of understanding. May we never be confused as we hear your word, but we ask that your word will be dished out to us in a way that we will understand it and put it into practice. May your word heal us of every sickness, both spiritual and physical, cure our diseases, Take away every confusion from us. Draw us closer to yourself. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are talking about today beyond entering heaven. Beyond entering heaven. We have a hope. And our hope is making the kingdom. Making it into the kingdom. But... As a believer that is saved, I want you to look beyond just making it into the kingdom. Is it just about entering heaven? Is that all you aim as a believer? But the Bible doesn't actually teach us to aim at that only. There are other things we benefit when we enter heaven. And that is reward. Before we read any Bible verse, I want to take my time, little time to explain to us some things. There is difference between reward and salvation. Reward is what you get for what you have done, for the work you've done, the remuneration for what you've done. But Salvation is, is not by works, it's by faith in Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9 says, For by the grace, for by grace ye are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. That means it is not because of your own power, it's not because of your own effort, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So we see very clearly the Bible teaches that salvation is free. And that is the truth. Salvation is free. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So when you believe, remember, it's a gift. Jesus Christ is a gift. He gave. Jesus Christ was given. Jesus Christ wasn't paid to us as a reward. He was given to us as a gift that whosoever believes in him will not perish. So we were already perishing. And Jesus Christ was given to pay for the penalty of the things we have done. He paid as a sacrificial lamb. He paid the price for the sins we have done and gave us his own life. So he died in our place and gave us his own life. But after we have been saved, after we have come to believe in Jesus Christ, after we have been saved, we are asked to occupy till he comes. We are given talents and we are given different spiritual gifts, including 
physical gifts like materials, houses, children, jobs, money, health, beauty, handsomeness, different kind of things we are endowed with. And we are expected by God to go into the world and use everything that we are given to propagate the gospel and work for the kingdom. Now, after we have worked and finally entered heaven, we will receive rewards for what we have done. So today, I want to encourage us that we should look beyond entering heaven. It is beyond just making heaven. There are people who are going to be in exalted positions, and we're going to look at scriptures today. There are people who are going to be in exalted positions, those who are going to be in low positions. There are positions in heaven, even in hell. The punishment in hell is categorized. God is not unfaithful. There are different degrees of punishment in hell. So also there are different degrees of rewards in heaven. Everybody is not equal. For instance, the apostles, they are going to be 12 apostles. They are going to sit with Christ to judge the 12 tribes of Israel. And you see the new Jerusalem too, that is going to come down from heaven. The pillars of the city are named after there are 12 pillars that are named after the 12 apostles. Your name will not be in a pillar. We have different rewards, but these people are human beings like us. But they have some special recognition in heaven. For someone who was born into Christianity, who grew up in church and become a Sunday member, attend weekly activities, and then make it into heaven. And someone who become a, a, a very aggressive preacher like Paul, they don't have the same reward. Look at a former criminal on the cross who committed crimes. He never worked for God. He never gave offering. He never paid tithes, he never evangelized, he never prayed, he never interceded for the saints, he never faced any kind of persecution. He was granted the free gift of life. And boom, Jesus Christ said today, you will be with me in paradise. So if Jesus said, because you believe by faith, even though you, did, you never worked for me, because it is a gift right here, right now, even without baptism, Come with me to paradise. You can't compare that one with someone who died as a martyr. People like Peter, people like um, people like Jeremiah, Hosea, different kind of people who, some of whom God said, don't even marry. And they remain eunuchs. And some of them who said, no, I'm going to dedicate my life, my marital life to God. I'm not going to get married at all. I'm not going to define myself with women or with men. You don't expect the same results. There are people who are actually missionaries. Okay, this is Africa. Some people brought the gospel to us. Some of them, mosquitoes kill them. Mosquito bites, malaria killed them, and they never gave up. Other batches came. Some, they took the gospel to dangerous places, and they were killed by those who saw them as threats to their culture, to their tradition, and they never gave up. So there are different rewards for different people. Now, you as a believer who believes that you have been saved, what do you do extra to make sure that you lay your treasures in heaven? Meanwhile, I just want to make it very, very clear that I'm not preaching this message to tell you to give to me or to give to my ministry. Reward in heaven is beyond reward for giving. It's beyond that. 
There are some people in church today who don't have money to give, but their rewards in heaven, their rewards are so great. There could be sweepers in the church. There could be intercessors. They could be, they may not have money to give, but every day they go to church, they ring the bell. They ring the bell and call people. They make sure they don't travel and stay overnight because, you know, maybe 6 a.m. they are going to the church to ring the bell. They may not have an offering to give. There are others who have no money to give, but they are always on the evangelism um, movement. There, there are people, believe me, there are people who have nothing doing. They have no job. They have nothing to tent making. But all they do is move from one city to another, proclaiming the good news, proclaiming the gospel. They depend on what they are given to eat. And that some of them were given this assignment by God, never to do any job, no tent making, but just to preach the good news. Have you forgotten about John the Baptist? This is someone who was given birth to by a high priest. Being the only son and a Levite, he is supposed to take over from his father. He refused to be a priest because of the calling of God. He did not eat tithes and offerings. The priests were never to work. They were to eat feed from the tithe and from the animals and the materials brought for sacrifices. They have their own portion. He never collected uh, parts of rams and animals and goats and bulls. He never did that. He was never married. He suffered imprisonment. He never had a girlfriend. He was not living in the society, he never lived in the society. When he became of age, he went to the desert. He never eat, he was not eating our kind of food. His food was white locust and honey. Locust and white honey, that was what he was eating. But do you know that Jesus Christ said, of all men born of women, there is none greater than John, but the least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. I'm not going to go into the interpretation of this statement made by Jesus Christ, but you see that even Jesus Christ sees this man as someone who has an assignment from God, number one, and that he has sacrificed so much for the kingdom. And Jesus Christ says he has a rank. Everybody going to heaven, we go to the same heaven, to the same paradise. But everybody does not have the same reward. Our rewards are different. And I want you as a child of God to begin to have a high aim of your reward from God. By what? By working so hard. Let's look at the test for today. Matthew 19, 27 to 29. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we are forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the generation when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone that had forsaken houses or children or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit eternal, everlasting life. Praise God. So Jesus Christ, Peter asked Jesus Christ, Lord, we've left everything and we're following you. <laughs> what about us? 
What about us? Let me ask you a question. If you have many children, and most of them are stubborn, most of them are disobedient to you, but assuming you have 12 children, two are very obedient. They know when you are sick. They know when you're tired. They run your business. They don't steal. They don't take anything for themselves. They only rely on what you give to them. They are very faithful if you are not. At your business place, you have no worries so long as you are there. But the remaining 10 are uh, wayward. Each time you are not at your business place and any of them are there, any of them is there, you are worried because they can't manage your business. If they don't know when you're sick, they don't know when you're tired, and they can just spend money without a prover. If you are to write your will, how will you write it? Will you give everybody the same thing? Will you be so unfaithful to give everybody equal? All of them are your children. Yeah, that's what nature has detected. But you as a parent, what will you do? Okay, if you want to share your properties and maybe you want to settle them, they are of age, you want to settle them so that they can go and set up their own businesses. Will you give them the same amount of goods? The one that squander your goods and the ones that are careful to make sure that they protect what you have. Are you going to give them the same amount of things? Or you will want to show an example of encouraging faithfulness. I believe you want to show an example of encouragement. You want to encourage other children. Maybe every year or once in a while, you just use them as an example, the two good ones who are obedient to you, and just give them some things, buy some clothes for them and tell them, well, you always, always ask for me to give to you first, which is what you're supposed to do. And because you're faithful, you have this, you have this. That is how God is too. So Peter asked Jesus Christ, Lord, we have left everything and we are following you. What about us? What shall we have? What will be our reward? But Jesus Christ told him, he mentioned the things they left for him. Jesus Christ knows very well that these people following him have left their jobs. Most of them were fishermen. Many of them have left their families. All of them left their families. And you remember Jesus Christ said to one of the would-be disciples that fossils have holes, the best of the air, they have nests where they lay their heads, but the Son of Man have nowhere to lay his head. So these people that followed him, the disciples, they had no place to lay their heads. They had no furnished apartment. So they were actually living in the same condition with Jesus Christ. They did not live lavish lifestyles. Jesus Christ did not actually live like a rich person. He lived like an average person. As a matter of fact, there was a time that they wanted to prevent Jesus. They almost prevented him from entering the temple because they didn't have money. Jesus Christ did not have money to pay temple tax. There was no money. Some people say Jesus Christ was rich. No, Jesus Christ wasn't rich. People were given to him. He wasn't working. Some people were providing food, providing supplies for him. Even the donkey he used, he borrowed it. And after he used it, he returned it back. Even his tomb in the time of Jesus Christ, 
it was very, very important for people to carve their own tomb, their own grave, what we call grave over here. You have to dig your grave and prepare it. Jesus had none. Jesus did not live like a rich man. And even though he wasn't rich, they were given to the poor. They were given to the poor. You remember Judas, the night Jesus Christ was betrayed. When Jesus Christ told Judas to hurry up and do what he wants to do, the disciples thought that because he was a treasurer, he was with a money bag, they thought that they were Jesus Christ was referring to giving to the poor. So it was their tradition to give to the poor, even though he wasn't super rich. Unfortunately, many of our ministries today don't give to the poor. A lot of our men of God don't give to the poor. In fact, I saw a video this week of a man of God who was saying, your, your first fruit doesn't belong to the church. It belongs to me. So it has graduated from giving your first salary, your first fruit of the month, to the church to giving it to him. He said, it is for this temple. You have to give it to me. <laughs> if people like that, by the grace of God, make it into heaven, they will be surprised that they have already received their rewards on earth. I'm not saying men of God shouldn't receive gifts, but it is wrong. It is 100% wrong to tell people to give you their first month salary of the year, every year. Imagine the thousands of people in this ministry, everybody giving him. What does he need all this money for? Well, meanwhile, there are people who are dying of hunger. There are children who are into prostitution right now. If you doubt what I'm saying, this evening, I could go outside and show you pictures of children who are into prostitution. I try to convince some of them, but they are not ready. Only a few do agree to leave prostitution. I mean, children below the age of 18 years, they are into prostitution because they can't feed. Sometimes I cry. Meanwhile, you see this man of God asking for more and more and more and more to feed their lust. Well, they are their reward already. So Jesus Christ told Peter that all of you that left your families, your brethren, your houses, your sisters, your father, mother, wife, children, lands, everything you've left for me, you are going to receive an hundredfold. Not just that, too, you will inherit the kingdom of heaven, everlasting life. So you won't just receive these things, but you will receive, you will. Uh, inherit everlasting life and you will enjoy all these things. There is difference between reward and salvation. A lot of Christians are concerned about their salvation and they care nothing about their reward. From today, I want you to think about reward. Reward is very, very important. There are some people who don't give to the poor, they have no monthly allowance for the poor. Let me tell you, while I was in cathedral in Worry as a pastor, there was a time the Lord told me that I must always have food in my house. I eat very little, and there are days I fast within the week. And there are these people who will always come to ask for food. Two things God told me. 
having a Bible, a spare Bible to always give out, and also food to always give out to someone. So even at my level, then God didn't want me to tell people when they need food that, oh, I don't have much in the house. No, he said, I should always buy food and keep in the house and give out. Some people have no plans for giving to the poor. They have no plans. Some have no plans to give to the church. Some only give to the work of God when they receive prophetic words or they want to gain God's favor or gain the favor of a man of God. That shouldn't be. As a matter of fact, when you see the preachers on the street or maybe online, but I do it a lot of times, when I see them on the street, I mean, those ones who preach, in motor parks, public motor parks, and they speak the truth. A lot of times I encourage them because many of them don't have anything they are doing other than spreading the gospel. I saw one recently, um, I think about three or two months ago, and I, I was so impressed, a young man, and I, I offered to give him money. I said, "Where you take this and manage this? He said, no. God told him to preach and not collect anything. So I took his phone number from him. There are people, I saw another woman. I was in a tricycle. And the motorcyclist, Passed, didn't want to carry her because her money was not enough. So they negotiated and the woman said her money, she can pay that amount. And I told the motorcyclist, please carry her. She had a megaphone, public address system. So as soon as she got into the, the tricycle, she started preaching. So we were talking and talking, and then I asked her what she does for a living. She says she has she has little business, like she uh, bakes snacks, just little snacks, and that's what she sells, managed to feed, and then she goes out to preach. I told myself these are the kind of people we need to encourage. So I gave her some money. When you see people like these, some of them do not know where their next meal will come from. Give to them. When you see people who are in real need, I know there are lots of scammers everywhere. There are some people who are professional beggars. When I know them, when I see them, I don't give to them. We shouldn't encourage begging. We should encourage hard work. When you see people who are in real needs, please give to them. You may not receive the reward in this world, but your reward is in heaven. How many of us are laying our treasures in heaven? Now, let me tell you, you could, there are lots of people who will get to heaven that discover that they have, their mansion is too small. I don't, I don't want to be, I have no problem being poor in this world. I have no problem. I was born poor and I'm not afraid of poverty. Even poverty knows that I'm not afraid of it. In fact, I have my own limitation. I limited myself that this is, no matter how much money I have, this is how my life is going to look like. Some people think that I can't afford a car. I can't afford a car in a year. A year, I can't afford a car. But I choose to give that money to the poor and to pay children's school fees. It gives me joy. As a matter of fact, I use artificial leg. I'm not saying it so that you give me a car. If you give me a car right now, 
I will sell it and give the money out. <laughs> so don't even do it. What I'm saying is that I use artificial leg. A lot of times I can't sit in a public vehicle, so I have to pay for two seats so that I can be comfortable. Yes. A woman who used to sell cars met me one time and told me, I know uh, your salary is not much, but if I give you a car, you will be faithful to pay me instrumentally, even if it takes years. No problem. Your situation needs a car. I told her no. I have my own reasons. There are things I refuse to use, not because it is sinful, and if I see those who use them, I don't criticize them. Because it is their right. Neither if I use them, it is sinful to me. But no, but I, I choose to live a moderate life and not a luxurious life and invest more in the kingdom work. Yes. I have no problem living poor on earth, but I don't want to be poor in eternity. I'm not boasting, I'm just telling you my resolution, what I've resolved. I don't want to be poor. I don't have more than, maybe I don't, okay, let me say, I don't have more than 120 years here. I don't. But across this place, we have zillions of, there is nothing like years. It is eternity. It is a timeless time that has the beginning, that has no beginning. And the end that has no end. That is eternity. And who we will become in eternity has a lot to do. I mean, our reward in eternity has everything to do with what we do in this world. Within this short period of time, we'll stay in here. There are places I dare not go to eat. I feel very free to give money to a beggar than use that same money to buy costly food to eat. Me, I like to eat healthy food. I like to eat rich food, but not costly food. You don't need to buy costly food before you eat healthy. I like to eat healthy food. I like to eat natural foods. But costly food, I will never buy it with my money. I will not. Let me tell you something. I have never any day bought a plate of food of a thousand naira. Any day. I have not. I have not. <laughs> I have not. 1,000 Naira plate of food. Um, dollar rate was a dollar equals to 1,400 Naira. That means, compared to this exchange rate, I've never bought a meal, a single meal for a dollar. I have not. When I travel, I was always look for a moderate place that is clean, they cook fresh food, I'll go there and eat. Not because it is sinful if I do, but I have my own limit. One day I was preaching in the church and I said, if I tie a wristwatch that is a hundred thousand naira, I will be needing a brain scan to see if there is anything wrong with my brain. A hundred thousand naira then was about, let me say like $150 or like $120 then. hundred thousand naira now is, is less than a hundred dollars, maybe like $80. Because with 100,000 naira, 
that 100,000 Naira can correct, can go a long way to correct a club foot. Physical disability of a child. 100,000 Naira can pay the school fees of a child for a number of, maybe a few years. I mean, in primary school. $100 can go a long way in a child's destiny. It can save his soul. So I see it as tying somebody's destiny in my head. I know a lot of times when you don't dress uh, up to expectation, people look at you and they overlook you that who is this, this poor man. But I have lived my life to the point of not impressing people. If there is anybody I need to impress, that person should be God, my rewarder. I don't need to impress anybody. No, not again. As a matter of fact, for a number of years now, I used to have only one shoe, one pair of shoe. And that's what I use. It's not because I don't have the money. I have the money. But I told myself, this world I'm passing through. And let me tell you something. I have put different things in place that will checkmate me so that even if I have billions of dollars, I will still be able to live the life I live today. Yes. If there will be any change, it will be a very slight change. That's the truth. We, a lot of times, we live as if we are living the whole world here. We are living the whole life here on earth. People want to make it big. People want to be known. People want to establish. People want to build houses. And that is why we have a lot of people who have mental problems in the Nigerian government stealing the fortune of millions of people and storing them abroad. They have mental problems. They are not thieves. These people are not normal. They can borrow trillions of dollars and steal the money. These people are not normal, they have mental problems. These are not thieves. Thieves are normal people who are greedy. But this is beyond greed. This is beyond witchcraft. Yeah. A lot of people think by making a name here, they will find satisfaction for their souls. No. The real show is not here. The real show is not here. The real show is there. As a believer, don't lay your treasures in this world. And for you to lay them in heaven, you don't need to pass your money through me. There are poor people around you. Give to them. There are precious around you. Give to them. Invest in the kingdom of God. You go for evangelism. Win souls for the kingdom. It is having a great reward in heaven doesn't revolve around money alone. It revolves around a lot of things, including even going down on your knees, having a covenant with God, and praying for the body of Christ. Or just singling out some men of God, some children of God, and praying for them. Going for evangelism. Or printing tracts and just giving out tracts. You may not even leave your house. It could be you see a message of truth, salvation, could be a short video, and you just send it out. It could be a write-up you write, and this 
is the world of driven by technology, just sent through WhatsApp and just occupy yourself with God's work. What are you doing for this kingdom? How much have you invested into the kingdom of God? Beyond entering heaven is a topic. Yeah, you're going to heaven. Yeah, agree. How much have you sacrificed for this kingdom? How much? Let me read this passage. 1 Corinthians 3, verses 11 to 15. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work. Of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he had built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Now, this passage is about, it's, it makes it very, very clear that, okay. Those of you who have been saved, those of you who are in Christ, what is your contribution to this foundation that has been laid by Christ? Is it of gold? Is it of silver? Is it of hay? Plastic? Is it of clay? Because every man's work will be revealed with fire. The fire is talking about, it means... The nature of God's judgment that will filter everything and refine everything. Now, some people, when they are giving to people, they are always with a selfie. Now you have received your reward. You are giving with one hand to the poor and you are always on the camera. You want to put it on social media. You have received your reward. Oh, you want to tell people, oh, you see that sister dancing there? Yeah. Does she look beautiful in those clothes? Yeah. Do you know I sue them for her? You have received your reward. <laughs> don't announce your good. The Bible says, don't let your lifetime know what your right hand is doing. Give your arms in secret. Now, for someone who is saved and you don't know how to give your arms in secret, Remember, you have already received your reward. So you're going to say, but Lord, I used to give to men of God. I used to support your work. I used to do evangelism. I used to give to the poor. But what is the motive behind it? Did you follow the rules? When you're doing it to receive praises from men, if you used to preach to receive praises from men, you have already received your reward. Now let me tell you one big struggle I used to have. I know a number of people who met me and told me, you are running a charity organization and you don't post these things online. I said, yes. And they said, you were wrong. I said, but I don't feel like because I'm giving to people. I sh like during the COVID-19, lockdown a lot of many times we went to the market to buy food and we shared people who couldn't go out people who were starving some of these people rely on daily work labor um, daily labor some of them go and hawk and sell things on the street or in the market they couldn't go so we were going to the market to buy food stuff and share to people and some people were kind of if you're spending so much money on food, why don't you post these people? Just post them online. I said, no. I struggled a lot. A lot of people argue with me. One man told me, so long as your charity organization is open, 
to public donation, you also need to make these things open. When I employed an administrator, I told him I have a weakness. I don't know how to separate my personal charity from these charity organizations' activities. I feel guilt when we post these things online, but it is not good for the sake of transparency. This is my weakness. I don't know how to do fundraising. I don't know how to post these things online. So this is your responsibility. Now, God had to even convince me that there is difference between, he told me, you have to live an accountable lifestyle. You have your personal charity work you're doing. Give money to the poor. I don't need to record it. That is my personal charity. The one that is the charity organization is doing, that is an organization open for public sponsorship. And so long as you receive public donations, the people are not here with you. You have to also show to the world and show to them what you're doing with the money. Even God himself had to convince me that it is not wrong to put these things online. So if you look at our social media platform, you could see some of the things we've done a long time ago, like some years now, and we're just posting them. Some of them, we have the videos, we have the pictures, but we didn't post them. They were just documentation. If I give my personal charity to people and I record it or just tell everybody I am wrong, that is the truth. If I am doing my personal charity or the money I'm giving to God, if I'm announcing it, I have received my reward already. I have to make sure that these things are done accordingly. There are rules. Look at what Jesus Christ said. Matthew chapter 16 verse 27. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then shall he reward every man according to his work. Every man shall receive his reward from the Lord when he returns. Are you just concerned about entering this kingdom or you are also concerned about your position in Christ in heaven? Your reward in heaven, are you concerned about that? Look at what Jesus Christ said. Matthew 5, verses 12 and verses 11 and 12. Blessed are you when men, revile, when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Yes, we have a reward in heaven. And the Lord is going to give us a reward. As a matter of things, there are as a matter of fact, there are sometimes we give up our own rights because we want peace to reign. We are not wrong, but we assume the position of peacemaking and we push for peace. Let me tell you, it is counted for you as righteousness and you have a reward in heaven for doing that. You are the one that is offended. You are the one making peace. That is beyond the human level. That is counted for you as righteousness. Everything you do, there is a reward. Let's look at some of the scriptures. Matthew 10, 41 and 42. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whom, whosoever shall give to drink unto 
One of these little ones, a cup of cold water, only in the name of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. A lot of times we are made to understand that the reward from God comes in form of uh, having children, having good health, having financial prosperity, material prosperity, having long life. No! It's not limited to that. Let me tell you, if um, anybody that gives in this world as a reward, it is a law, it is a law of nature. When you give, you receive. Blessed is the hand that gives than the hand that receives. It is a law of nature. So when you give, you will be blessed. That is the truth. But we who are believers, beyond receiving our blessings as the law of nature dictates, beyond receiving physical blessings, receiving blessings in this world, which comes, uh, which come in different formats, in form of health, in form of, it could even be in form of favor your children are having in the world because you are good, people are praying for you, praying for your seeds, praying for your generation. It could be in form of financial prosperity, material prosperity, it could be in form of people showing you kindness, different forms. It goes beyond that. We have a reward in heaven. So much reward. So those of you who get discouraged, when you do good in this world, don't get discouraged again. Our reward is in heaven. Look at what Hebrews says, Hebrews 6.10. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed toward his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. God is not unfaithful. He knows everything you have done for the sake of his kingdom. Those of you who are into evangelism or into sponsoring evangelical moves, sponsoring missionaries, giving to your church, to print bulletins, to giving to preachers on the street, I tell you, God knows what you're doing. There is no higher investment you can make than the investment of soul winning. If you are into soul winning, you are a rich man in the kingdom of God. You are a mighty man in the kingdom of God. If you are into soul winning, you support soul winning, you go directly, you pray for those who are new converts, you do follow up. I tell you, anything that revolves around soul winning, it could even be financial contribution. You may not give millions. Giving actually is not about the amount, it's about the spirit behind the giving, the motive behind the giving, how much you have left. Circumstances surrounding your finances, it, it goes, and the purpose for giving, to whom this money is given. Is given because sometimes we feel that giving is giving. No, different grounds have different levels of fertility. Some grounds are very fertile, some are not fertile. That's the truth. And that is what I tell my people in our charity organization, my staff. I tell them it is not. Who is close to us? It is who needs this money most? Who needs this help most? And that is what we ask ourselves. Who needs this help most? If you give money to someone who has money already, you will be blessed. But if you give it to a, a homeless widow, you will be blessed the more. If you give money to someone that can give you back, that can pay you back, or render some level of reward to you, you will be blessed. 
But when you give to someone who cannot pay you back, huh, you will be blessed more. Jesus Christ said, when you organize parties, don't invite those who will reward you by inviting you back. Don't lend money to those who will give back to you, but lend to those who cannot even pay back. It will lend to the poor. Lend to the Lord. When you give to the Lord, when you give to the poor, you lend to the Lord. The poor are the direct business of God. The Bible says there will always be poor people in the land. So you remember that. Go into soul winning. For those of you who go into soul winning, listen to this. Daniel 12, 2 and 3. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting content. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Amen. This is what I am at. There's nothing wrong in living a good life here on earth. Yes. There's nothing wrong in living a luxurious life. Nothing wrong. But that luxury, that luxury, I want to sacrifice it to the greatest extent I can as a human being. And invest more into the kingdom and give to the poor so that let me tell you one thing. There is difference between just living your normal life as a believer and invest, investing into the kingdom of God. Some of these people you think are poor. They are investors. I'm not talking about people who... Some people think that by giving their money to prophets, they are investing into the kingdom of God. No. Some of you, you know that this man of God is a womanizer, he's a liar, he's, he lies, <laughs> and you sow your money into his life. You have not given to the kingdom of God. As a matter of fact, when you give to, a lot of times when you give to some of these ministries you know are not genuine, you are empowering Satan's children to fight the true gospel of Jesus Christ. That is the truth. Sometimes people give in the name of giving and they empower the kingdom of darkness to fight the truth. That is the truth. So when I preach, I tell people, if you want to give, give to those who are into evangelism, who are into charity, those who are mostly missionaries on the field, those who are on the field. Some of them don't have two clothes. I've seen some of them. Some of them have no food. They don't know where their next meal will come from. They leave their families, they leave their children, they leave everything. No marriage. Some of them don't even have children. Some of them haven't been married at all. And they are never ready to get married. Finally, let's hear the words of Jesus Christ. Matthew 6, 19 and 20. Lay, lay not up for yourselves treasure upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth, moth nor rust doth corrupt, and we are thieves, do not break through, nor steal. Are you ready to live beyond just normal life of entering heaven and become an intentional investor? 
become intentional in laying treasures in heaven. People may not even know that you are the one giving. People may not know you. You could see a neighbor suffering, get some food. They may not have CCTV camera to see you. Drop them, ring their bells. When they open, they see your notes. That somebody has dropped something. You are intentionally investing into your account in heaven. A lot of times, women of God have messed up this issue of investment and we narrow it down to give to me, come and donate to the work of God. No, it's, it's beyond that. Are you intentional about your reward in heaven? Now, let me tell you this story before I pray. Thank God I remember this story. I had a dream one time. And in this dream, I saw a man of God counting money. The place was heaven. I did not see gold or silver, but my attention was just this man counting money. And then another man died and also saw himself in heaven. And he saw the pastor, the man of God counting money, who died some years ago. And the one that recently died, who is just an uh, honorary Christian, not a pastor, saw him and he said, I can recognize this money. This is the sale we made today from our gas station. And the pastor who died many years ago told him that, okay, okay, now let me explain to you my understanding in the dream. In this dream, these two men, one was a pastor, was one was a man. They had a gas station together. And before this pastor died, he willed part of his ownership to a widow. And then he died. And when this second man died, he saw this pastor counting the sales of that very day. And he was able to recognize the currency. He said, these are the sales we made today before I died. And the pastor was explaining to him that since the day I willed part of the money, part of my ownership of this gas station to this poor widow on earth, all the sales have been coming to me, including yours my own part of the sales and your part of the sales. I don't know why the man's part had to go to the pastor. So in heaven, he was receiving these daily sales and he was counting it. Let me tell you something. In this message, I've said a lot of things about myself. I don't like preaching about myself or talking about myself. As a matter of fact, I'm trying to remove my personal information from online. Family, personal details. So if you go to my social media, you don't see me posting pictures of me traveling. Or it's more of ministry, charity organization, me posting um, write-ups. Apart from that, I don't post things about myself. But I am led to talk about myself because I want you to know that I am not just telling you this. This is my personal conviction. I'm sharing my faith with you. This is my faith. This is what I believe. This is what I practice. You see me wearing this white a lot of times. Most times. One of the reasons I wear this white is because of moderation. Moderation. This is less than two dollars. Yeah. And I have many of them. One of the reasons is moderation. I just want to live a moderate lifestyle. And see how much I can invest into the kingdom of God. 
When I was living in abject poverty, I told God, God, if you can bless me, I'm not going to use my money to do anything in this world. And over the years, I say it publicly, I don't want to use my money to do anything in this world. It is for God and for the poor. That's all. It is for God and the poor. That's all. And I have plans. I have plans ahead. Things I need to do. Build computer training center. I've started already. Trainings are ongoing. I've started. If I have millions today or tomorrow, there are things I need to use them to do. They are already, the plants are in place. So the money is not going to get into my head. No. I want you to intentionally start investing into the kingdom of God. I know my reward when I speak the truth. I have prophetic gifts, but I can never monetize them. I, and I will never monetize them. It is for the edification of the body of Christ and for preaching the good news. They are not to tell people, can I prophesy to you? So see now. No. Since 2005, I don't sleep first before God speaks to me. But I can't monetize these gifts. I rather use it to serve the body of Christ and receive my rewards from heaven than monetize it as a lot of people do. No. I have no problem being poor here, but I will do everything possible to be rich in heaven. And I want you to be rich towards God. Don't be rich towards men and be poor towards God. Be rich towards God. Do you want to be a servant in heaven? Or you want to be a leader in heaven? Do you want to live in a poor mansion? We've had stories of people who had revelations and God showed them mansions, beautiful mansions. Sometimes poor homes leaking and say, this is, and Jesus would tell them, or angels would tell them, this is your reward. Because even though you are saved, you never invested into the kingdom work. When people come to ask you for arms, come to beg you, do you give to them? Do you? I want to challenge you. Do you have a little percentage of your monthly salary you give to the poor? Do you go out and then you just put little money in your pocket in case somebody needs it? Do you do it? I posted something on Facebook some years ago. Let me try to quote what I posted. I said, it is religious hypocrisy for you to always neglect the poor around you in order to give to your prophets. Is it prophet or pastor? It is religious hypocrisy to always neglect the poor around you in order to give to your pastor. And one of my church fathers called me, a man I respect so much, he called me and he said, Hosanna, take that post down. I said, no, I am not taking it down. He unfriended me and blocked me. I refuse to take it down till today. I will never take it down. That is what a lot of people do. They neglect the poor people around them. They don't give to them. But they will go to a man of God and always give. There's nothing wrong in giving to the man of God. But why neglect the poor people around you? You don't need to neglect the poor people around you. As you give to the man of God, give to the poor around you. There are people who donate millions to the church. 
But there are poor people around them dying of hunger. They don't give to them. I don't know what some people believe and what they practice. Give to the poor around you. Invest into the kingdom of God. Now, don't just give to the poor alone and not give to your pastor, not give to men of God. It is also wrong. Because a lot of times, they may not have food to eat. Let me tell you, I had, I think, two occasions, even as a pastor in cathedral, I had no food to eat. And I have a principle, I don't beg, I don't ask anybody for food, I don't ask anybody for money. The worst I've ever done is borrow money from friends and mostly men of God. If I don't have, I could borrow to pay back later. But it's not a part of me to ask. I'm not used to asking because right from childhood, I've learned to pay my own school fees, take care of my own bills, and take care of myself, even before I became an adult. Before I became an adult, I already had my own farms. Before I started junior secondary school, I had my own farm. So I'm used to being self-sufficient. It's not pride. It's the way I grew up. And I don't like to ask. I've never told anybody to sow money into my, to sow seed or sow money into my ministry or into my life any day. I don't do it. Sometimes people ask me, what do you need? I don't know how to say this is what I need. Because I, I feel embarrassed when people ask me that direct question. Well, you can give whatever you want to give. I see you led. I'm not saying the day a man of God told you or asked you for money, he has committed sin. As he takes care of your spiritual health, your spiritual affairs, it is your responsibility to also take care of him physically, of his physical needs too. I'm not trying to discourage you if you are a man of God. This is my own principle. This is the way I operate. So you as a child of God, invest into the kingdom of God, give to the poor. And as you do so, also make sure that you live a holy life. Live the life of obedience, remain in Christ, so that you can invest, you can receive your reward. Because you can only receive this eternal reward when you make it into heaven. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for your word today. Lord. I pray for your children, those who support this ministry, those who give to me. Sometimes they say, oh, this is not for ministry. Don't issue me receipt. This is for you. Send me your personal account. I pray for your children who don't have so much, but they give to their niece, their nephews, their cousins, they provide for their parents. They do different jobs. They don't care because, not because of themselves alone, but because of others. Lord, I remember that. Those who go out of their way to discomfort themselves to sponsor the work of God, who give to preachers, those who give clothes, those who give furniture, those who give material possessions to churches, to ministries, to motherless babies' homes, to different kind of people in need. Lord, bless these people. I remember those who sponsor this ministry. Lord, bless them. Those who go to orphanages, orphanage homes, from time to time, to bless them. Those who have offered scholarships to different people, Lord, bless them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us, O Lord God, help us, Jesus, help us, Almighty God, help us, Almighty Savior, to make it into the kingdom. Those who are running this race, Lord, 
help them to finish this race with joy in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for everything you've done. Receive all the glory, Lord. Heal your people. Take away troubles from their lives. Heal the marriages of your children, Lord. Bless this ministry, Lord. We want to do more. Lord, bless this ministry so that we can reach out to more people. In Jesus' name, amen. Those of you who have been supporting us, I want to say a very big thank you to you for all your support, for your support in different ways. Thank you. May the Lord God Almighty bless you abundantly. Please share this video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And when you subscribe, turn on the notification bell. And not just that, too, please recommend this channel to other people to subscribe. Thank you and God bless you. Bye-bye.